I went in for a bowl and I didn't come out with one. Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Tasty Business. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to cook these lovely Cornish crabs. And we're gonna serve that with some beautiful uh, Vesuvius tomatoes, grilled sourdough, and we're gonna make a nice lemon mayonnaise. It's all gonna happen outside. Right, lemon mayonnaise. This is an essential tool to have in your, in your locker. It is egg yolks, Dijon mustard, salt, olive oil, and veg oil. This one's a lemon mayonnaise. It's gonna be made with a lot more lemon juice than you would normally, because I want that acidic punch to bind the crab and it's going to pull the whole dish together. Easiest way to take out the yolk, crack the eggs straight into a bowl and then you can just lift it out with your hand. So you've got the eggs straight there, just lift them straight out. Okay that's two yolks done. Then we're going to go in with a teaspoon of Dijon mustard and the juice of one lemon. I'm just going to take the tops off because these are large lemons so uh, this is quite a useful bit of kit mexican elbow this is an idiot proof way to make mayonnaise in a food processor you literally cannot fuck it up if you whisk it by hand it's you're more likely to split it if you don't put the oil in really slowly you can make this much quicker than making it by hand basically and it'll always come out all right if it's getting too thick and you haven't got your oil, all your oil in, then you need to put a little bit of water in just to loosen it. Because that, if you put too much oil, it's gonna split. Okay. Right, let's get going. So, you want it on auto. And we're gonna go in with veg oil and olive oil. Uh, the reason for using both oils, people ask me this, have asked me this before, is because olive oil often has the, those bitter notes coming through and if you make a mayonnaise just out of olive oil you it's often too bitter just sort of use your senses and I keep repeating this but you've got to taste at all stages let's get let's get cracking machine on pinch of salt good pinch of salt in there and then we'll start with the olive oil and you can just stream that in you the first bit pretty slowly but then actually you can just start you can start ramming it in and then we'll just switch over to the veg oil so you can see now i just want to show you it's it's still loose that means there's not enough oil in there that's like a cream we want like a thick nice thick mayonnaise tastes good lots of lemon coming through thick mayonnaise it's holding on the spoon taste test mm. delicious lemony salty really rich with the olive oil bang on let's get on to the crab if you've never prepped a crab before it is quite lengthy because you don't want to get any shell in your food because that will just ruin the whole experience so first we're just going to boil these these are going to take seven minutes they're about one to one and a half kilo crabs they're from the cornish coast sustainably caught straight from a supplier who we use i use in the restaurants flying fish absolutely fantastic they were delivered to my doorstep at three o'clock in the morning straight from carmel salt good amount of salt no surprises here you want to cook them in water that is as salty as they were swimming in Okay, so the water's just like ticking just under a boil, which is kind of perfect. I'm just gonna go one at a time, just because the pan's not quite big enough, and these are quite chunky boys. Put them in, lid on. Seven minutes, this is gonna tick over nice and gently. Okay, right, so now, just gonna take them out. We want to cool down the crab so we can pick it put it straight on ice so we don't want to burn our hands and i want to eat this crab pronto i'm hungry so this crab has been cooked and then it's been chilled 
if you remember from just two seconds before. So we're gonna now take it apart into its segments so we can break it down easily. The majority of the meat is in the claws. That's the easiest meat to access. And then there's good meat accessible in the legs. And then inside the body, you've got all the, uh, all the brown meat, which I'll show you. Turn the crab over. You've got two claws. So you take the, take the claws off like that. Come off nice and easily. And we've got all the legs, which we can just take off like so. So just use your thumbs and push it like that and the body pops out. So if you look at that, you've got all these uh, gills on it. That is inedible. They're also known as like dead man's fingers. In the shell, we've got all the brown meat inside the head. So you can use a, well, to take the brown meat out at the beginning. You can just scrape that out into, into the bowl. The brown meat is the richer of the uh, two. And any leftover crab I might have from this, I'll probably make a crab stock and then I'll make a crab tagliolini. Ooh. And now it's time to get moving on the, on the white meat. So keep a bowl. We've got a bowl for our shells. So start with the claws, because they're the easiest part. Okay, so what you want to do, just with your hands, that bit, end bit will come off nice and easily. So we're going to put that to one side. Crab is all about segmenting. Okay, with this, so there's a little, little nick here, which you can see is quite a little, you can simply knock that, and then it comes off hard. Well, easy. Okay, and then the last bit to do with the claw, Always nice to give it a little shake. And this bit here, you can just break. That comes off. Okay, just repeat the same with this core. Cooking like this, you're prepping the whole thing, you're respecting the whole animal. Whereas if you just buy, you know, a little bit of cow, you don't know where the other part of it went. At least I know I'm giving this the respect it deserves. I mean, the only bit really I'm gonna take out is the meat from this this top part of the leg. In here, you've got all the bits, uh, the sockets where the legs were attached. Do you see that? So to be able to prep the body, we need to just whip those out. We've broken it down into our segments. And now, the fun part of getting the meat out. Now, make sure you've got a clean board because when you're opening all these bits, you might have a bit of excess shell knocking around, so we don't want that. Claw meat. What I'll do here is just go either with the, like the back of a knife or you can use the front of a knife. But one firm tap on one, one side, one firm tap on another side should be enough. You just want to ease that out. And you can see just from here, I can see there's no shell in this part. This claw has still got the cartilage attached. So what we're going to have to do is just push it off the cartilage because we know it's not got any shell in. It's quite nice to keep it in some big chunks. Normally you get crab in like the just individual flaky bits. But if we've got some nice big chunks like that, that's gonna offer some good texture. And you see that's from one claw, it's a decent amount of meat. Just make sure we're getting all of the stuff around the cartilage as well. If you've ever eaten crab and you've got shell in there and it's just like crunch, it's like he's chewing on a piece of glass. But that's why in restaurants, they're so like anal about picking crab. Some people pick crab like three or four times and under UV light, so you go in a dark room. Get UV light and go in the dark, but I wouldn't bother doing that. Same with the next one, firm crack, firm crack. Quite satisfying that. It's a very useful um, technique to have. So this claw meat, lovely, look at that. Now we're onto the middle joint. What we want to be doing here is you can just get a nice straight utensil. Nice and, that's a bit bent that one. But nice, a nice thin utensil and you can just dig that out. And pull it out the front here, see? All that meat just coming out. Okay, same with this knuckle, just dig out the meat. Then this cartilage you see hanging down, you can just pull the meat off that. It's all about little gains, this crab. You know, you've got this expensive ingredient. But if you know how to prep it, you can really get, get the most out of it. That's all the claw meat. I'll keep that separate from the leg meat and from the body. Just because I know I can pretty much guarantee there's zero shell in there. Whereas this might be a little bit more dubious. So with these, all you need to do, is just take, take off that one divot there and then you've got all the meat in there. So we're gonna go, this is another good little trick. Listen up, um, another good little trick in a restaurant. So if you do, if you're doing a job, you do one job, one job, one job, one job, and then have them all stacked up there and then you do the next job. 
and then you do the next job rather than like, oh, I'll just do that and then I'll do that and then I'll put it on there. You know, you just do one job, one job, one job. So you, you really like, it's like production line. You think of yourself as a production line. Does that even make sense? <laughs> and then we can use the same utensils, nice straight ones. And we can just dig out the meat from inside. I suppose this this part here is like some people would just be like, oh fuck, I can't be asked to do the legs. I only got I only got that much meat out of doing them. But actually, if you know how to do it, it doesn't take that long. And it's all about respecting the animal and making sure we are using every part that we possibly can. With the body, what you need to do is you get a little little utensil. You just need to be quite gentle. Just try and knock away the meat from the cartilage. This does take a while. This is the this is the longest longest job. But as I said before, respecting the animal and making sure we're getting the most that we possibly can out of it. And this this in the restaurant is the difference between profit and loss, probably, because it's expensive. With this crab meat here, the one that came from the body and the legs, I am just going to run through that. Okay, so with my with my hands, I oh, already felt a bit when I pushed it up. That, that, you know, we're looking for little bits of shell like that big. So you've got to be quite close. You want to look visually at this crab and you just sort of use like a, a fingering motion. <laughs> You're feeling out for anything that's not soft, juicy crab meat. That's the thing. If you buy crab meat that's in a can, uh, go home. I'm gonna mix these two together. Into this bowl. Look at all that, that's beautiful. I reckon one, one crab, that's like good for about four people for a starter. Three if you're hungry, because I, I, I'm hungry. We've got the lovely crab meat, and we're just gonna bind this with a good couple of spoons of the lemon mayonnaise. So just fold that through nicely. So we're not, we're not, we don't want to stir it too vigorously because you know we've kept those big chunks. If we just stirred it too vigorously, the chunks are gonna all go into little pieces. So it's kind of it would have been pointless activity. Got to taste it. Mmm, delicious crab is so fresh. I'm gonna just season it up. Touch more lemon juice, touch more salt, and some black pepper. Crab done. Now, tomatoes and brown crab. We've got a nice bull's heart tomato. We're just gonna cut these and then kind of squash them a little bit. We're seasoned with olive oil, salt, pepper. That's it. Take this tomato in half. Then we'll go in half again. So basically taking this tomato into eighths. All I'm gonna do is just sort of tear it. Tear it and push it open, yeah? Tear it and push it open. We're just, just softening up that tomato and so we can really push those things flat. Look at all that juiciness coming out. Salt, quite a lot of salt. Stuff like tomatoes and avocado take loads of salt. Um, pepper and lots of olive oil. This good quality Italian olive oil from last year's vintage, 2020, Capizzana. Mm. Oh, it's so good, so buttery. Okay, then you can just toss those together. That's gonna be beautiful. Tomato's done, brown crab. Taste that. Salty, probably doesn't need any salt. I'm just gonna go and touch a lemon juice. A little bit of pepper. Okay, and that is gonna, I'm, what I'm gonna do with this, whisk it up a little bit. I'm gonna spread that on the sourdough. So it's gonna go sourdough sweet tomatoes on top so you've got a really rich combination there sourdough crab and then the white meat on the side nice wedge of lemon with the sourdough just olive oil on top just rub it in cook the bread till it's nice and crispy and whilst we're doing that we get ready to plate sourdough off clove of garlic you're getting that raw garlic flavor with the tomatoes. It's just gonna be beautiful. So we're just gonna build up. If you're doing this for three or you're doing it for four, remember to use enough brown crab for, for everyone. 
Okay, spread that over the grilled sourdough. On with the tomatoes. Okay, just gonna lift that onto the plate. Okay, I'm going in here with some more juice. I'm gonna pick a couple of bits of basil from my very nice basil plant that I bought this morning. So you can tear some basil, put that on there. Nice colour, nice flavour. Basil and crab go very well together. Two sweet things. And then now for the crab. I like to go just a nice little, nice dollop like that. Finally. Beautiful wedge, mouthy lemon. Touch of lemon zest. Over the crab. And then obviously, olive oil. Tomatoes, crab, brown crab, lemon, lemon mayonnaise. Just knowledge of the ingredients, where it's from, when it's in season, when to eat it. I'm gonna go touch a lemon on the crab. Smash away a couple of bit, bit of bread, lovely bit of tomato, and then. Mm. Mm. The tomatoes are juicy, the crab is sweet, the bread's crunchy and the brown crab is rich. It's like a perfect, perfect harmony. It's summer on a plate, cooked outside. I mean, lovely bit of mouthy lemon, it's heaven. It's sophisticated, but you've made it at home, in your garden. It's funky tasty business.